Hello, hello, welcome to a lovely sketchbook tour video thing. Oh, excitement, it's been a while. If you're wondering why this video looks really weird, it's because that is a green screen. See? Magic. I'm like a magician. I'm filming this video a little bit differently because today I'm going to be going over a slightly different kind of sketchbook. So I actually have two kinds of sketchbooks. And the reason that I had these two types is because there are two kinds of paper that I generally buy. The first kind comes from individual sheets of paper. So I'll buy pads like this where you can tear out the pages or I'll just buy large packs of paper. And then when I end up with like this massive stack of loose paper, I will put that into a binder. And up to this point, I have been covering a lot of the binders that I have. However, sometimes I do still buy plain bound notebooks. I do have a lot more binders to cover in the series, but I also have a lot of these. So I figured today I could go ahead and start going through some of the bound sketchbooks that I have. I don't know how bad this green screen effect is, we're gonna find out. Okay, so this is the Dead Man book. Usually I get my sketchbook sketchbooks like this from Barnes & Noble, partially as a way to keep them consistent. I believe these are all standard 8.5 by 11, which is just the American standard paper size. Here in the UK it's A4, bet you didn't know that. In the UK, they have a different standard paper size, which is making my binders very difficult. But at least I'll know what I drew while I was here. So the first thing I should probably point out that I know a lot of people may have already noticed is that this book is labeled front. Part of the reason that I prefer loose paper for drawing is because I'm left-handed. So because of that, all of my sketchbooks are backwards. It confuses people. That's why I clearly labeled that this is the front of the book. All right, let's go ahead and see what's in here. So the first thing I have in here are actually some napkins. Uh, I grew up very, very poor, as many of you probably already know. So the idea of flying in an airplane was kind of like this bizarre, extravagant thing that I never thought I would be able to do because that was for super, super rich people. So the first time that I flew on an airplane, it was kind of a really big deal for me. I think I was 20 years old the first time that I flew in an airplane. So yeah, I decided to go ahead and just save the napkins as like a little keepsake. This is a coloring page that was given to me by a six-year-old. I believe I was babysitting and she asked me to color it, so I gave it my all. And I liked it enough that I decided to keep it. It just kind of ended up in the front page of this. Another thing that I kind of don't like about these sort of sketchbooks is that you can actually see the drawing through the other pages. So sometimes what I would do is that I would just skip every other page so there would be a separator between the drawings. That way, when you want to look at one thing, you can look at one thing without seeing the next thing behind it, if that makes any sense. So the first drawing in here was a character that I made after reading um, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac for the first time. I decided to name her Nim. She's actually a character that I put in a comic that's um, back in the States. If I had to guess, I think I started this book in 2007 or 2008, and I finished it in 2012 or 2013. The stuff in this book were some of the last drawings that I ever made with my favorite pen set. The Magna Tank gel pens that I keep talking about. Do you see how clean that ink is? so nice. Blank page. This house and this life are raw like that of a hide. Bleeding. This particular drawing is really important to me for one stupid reason. My younger sister grew up watching me draw, so whatever I drew was unimpressive because it all was just Echo's drawings. But this one, she actually really liked, and she told me that it was good, and that meant a lot to me because she never complimented my drawings. All of my drawings were just like of my normal quality, but for some reason this one she really liked, and that just made me extra proud of this one drawing in particular. Blank page. And the next drawing. So this is actually Nim from another angle. When I was learning how to draw, I had a lot of problems trying to figure out how to draw the same character multiple times. They would always come out slightly different and I didn't like it. So this was just me trying to redraw Nim in a different position while making it still look like the same character. It's so influenced by Jonan Vasquez. Like so much of my high school work was just so heavily influenced by Invader Zim and Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. Can't help it, man. Let's see what's next. So the company that made the crazy gel pens that I will not shut up about at one point released a neon gel pen set and I had to get it and this was just me kind of playing with it. I think it was partially inspired by Bratz. However, this was also the pre-stage of a character called Polly Porcelain. And I think the first sketch of Polly Porcelain I have is right here. Polly Porcelain is actually a character from a comic that I made about a toy store. She's a broken porcelain doll who's just been sitting on the shelf of this toy store for ages. And then this is her best friend, Victor. Voodoo, who is a tiny little voodoo doll toy. This is another comic that I fully finished, I think the first chapter of, and then the rest of the comic is pretty much fully storyboarded. And next we have something that is 
also very clearly inspired by Jonan Vasquez. This was actually based on some of his independent sketches that he was posting online. I want to say there's also some inspiration from Mojo Jojo, but I could be wrong. This is some line art for an emo dude that I never inked in. When I see stuff like this, I have like this slight urge to go back and add ink to finish the drawing, but at the same time, I feel like it's just been so long that I would be in a way destroying what I've already made. I feel like since I didn't do anything with it at that point, it's done, it's finished. I could scan it and copy it and ink it on a different page. I don't know, I'll figure it out later. Turning, turning, turning. So for a very long time, I've been trying to nail down a style that I'm completely content with, but I think I'm just doomed to draw in many different ways and I'm just gonna, echo everything. So this was one way that I thought I could kind of nail down a style because it had a lot of elements that I really liked. So I tried to apply this style to me and a bunch of my friends that I was going to school with. So these are drawings of me, my friend Esther, my friend Meryl, and my friend Barb. Good times. I actually really like this style. I almost feel like I should bring it back. Next, next, next. On this page I was just jotting down some ideas. The graphic design students were actually right next to the industrial design students, so I kind of uh, ended up being a little bit influenced by them. So I designed this little cover for a USB that made it look like it was a little robot because I realized that USB chips kind of look like little robots. Another thing that I wanted to do is to make like a purse backpack hybrid. I hate purses. I really hate purses. Most women, I feel like, hate purses. The thing is women's clothes are often designed without pockets because we're expected to carry purses and then women carry purses because we don't have clothes with pockets. And it's a horrible, vicious, never ending cycle and fashion designers, if you're out there, could you just give us some pockets, please? I'm not particularly fond of putting all of the weight of a big bag on one shoulder, although I do actually really like backpacks. It's an even distribution of weight across your back. It makes so much more sense than a purse. However, a lot of stores, including the art store that I used to go to almost once a week, had this policy where you had to check in your bag at the front counter, but women were allowed to carry purses into the store. It just seemed so pointlessly unfair. So in order to get around that, I decided to try and design a purse where you could actually take the strap and attach it to the base of the bag and turn it into a backpack. I'm sure that this already exists, but the reason that I was designing it was so that I could make my own. Not that I had time for personal projects. And then this up in the corner was actually meant to be like a little parasite under the skin with just its back showing. So it just kind of looked like, um, like a zit or something. <laughs> Very creepy. And then, you know, eventually when it got bigger, it would just like rip out of your skin. I, I had a weird, I had a weird brain. I still have a weird brain. Can't help it. And then these were just some music things that I needed to look up. We got Lotus Flower by Radiohead and Ruled by Secrecy from Muse. They were just songs that someone was playing in the studio and I wanted to find them later. Music. Moving on. I think I drew this one after seeing Rise of the Guardians. This was just a mini sketch for a drawing that I meant to do, but never did. I just wanted to draw someone like fishing for stars through a window. And then up at the top, I wrote, what if drops of lightning fell when it rained? It was just a pleasant idea that I thought might make a good drawing. <laughs> this is actually a design for a quilt pattern that I wanted to make based on a bunch of the projects from the first year of my graphic design program. Now that I'm seeing it, I mean, I've got the pattern. I should make it at some point. If I ever have time in existence, I think I'm gonna make this quilt. And then on the next page, I kind of tried to flesh out that whole backpack design a little bit better. I decided to go ahead and base the design on my friend's rucksack. That's what she called it, so that's what I called it. Oh, funny stuff. That's actually what I bought this fabric for. I actually bought this fabric to make that backpack. That was a long time ago. These are the eyes with which I see the world. No glass, no plastic, just me in the world. Trees become sticks, buildings become bricks, the sky a hazy sheet of blue. I got bored and I wrote a poem about what it's like to have bad vision. <laughs> and not be wearing glasses. You know those little symbols that you see on the bathroom signs? Uh, I wanna say that those were actually designed by AIGA in 1974. I think that's the reason that I wrote this down. AIGA is like this huge graphic artists association thing. Next, this one uh, was a bunch of notes that I took for like a scary animation kind of thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to make a scary film with my friends. I think I actually planned this right after seeing The Cat With Hands. Fabric skin plus skin fabric equals pumpkin ink. I don't know what that means. It was a bunch of stuff that I was planning with green screens, but never got around to it. So many plans, so little time. These were just a bunch of school notes. They don't really mean anything. It was mostly just advice for incoming freshmen and organization stuff. 
See, this is a more defined version of the quilt. I have everything on here down to the measurements. Someday, I'll make it someday. And then these are just more sketches for the backpack that I wanted to make. These were some internal pockets that I wanted to include. Next page. And then here I was trying to apply that style that I was developing with some original characters. This was a very weird song that I wrote about how everything I own is red and black. Let's not go too in-depth into that. So these are two sets of storyboards, one for a comic and one for a video. In this comic, almost every panel was going to be drawn in a different style or genre. And then this storyboard was for a video that could be played either backwards or forwards and still make sense as a video. Odd concept, isn't it? That one was actually really fun to make and I'm sad that I didn't get a chance to actually record it. So many cool projects that I didn't get to do. Next. This is me playing fashion designer, trying to make something cool and red and black. You know, stuff that I would wear. Next. These were some ideas that I had for a website that I wanted to build, and the links were going to be held inside of this creature's mouth, and I wanted to make it so that the mouth could expand or shrink whether or not you click it. Once again, a really cool thing that I never got around to doing. And then here we have a little character that I used to draw called Sad Man. I think I need to melt away. And then this is a sketch for a three-panel Sad Man comic that I wanted to make. Mommy, I love you. Challenge accepted. Oh my brain. I really like this one. This is yet again another one that I really want to go back and finish. So this one was supposed to be like a god character like the ones from Death Note. The Kami like uh, Ryuk? I think that's his name? I could be saying all those words wrong. I don't care. I can tell by the way that I drew the hair. We were studying um, the art of Alphonse Mucha. I don't know how to say his last name. I loved the way that he drew hair and so I kind of incorporated that into this. And then here I drew her to scale. So I actually wanted her to be about nine feet tall with giant obnoxious flowy hair that looked like it was underwater in air. Another thing about her was that I never wanted her to touch the ground. I wanted her to just hover. And then this was the character that I imagined her following around. I don't think I ever gave him a name. I was having a really difficult time drawing a beanie. But this is what I was talking about before, where I said I was like having trouble trying to draw the same character in multiple positions. That was just something that I found really difficult. And then here I was kind of trying to draw him without the hat. Is there a love so pure and fine it can withstand the test of time? And then you can see here my history class was still influencing the way that I was drawing hair. Next, this one. Oh boy. These were some sketches for a gender swapped uh, version of Naruto that I wanted to make called Naruto Polar, as in like the polar opposite. This idea did not go very far. Next page. So these are just some more sketches of the character from before with and without his hat. I could not figure out how I wanted to draw his face. It was kind of a failure. And then the one in the middle was really just a random sketch. Sometimes I just squiggle and there's no purpose. Next, perfect example. With this one, I was just kind of drawing a mask and that's it. That was just a scribble. I didn't even bother going over it with ink. Next, aww. So this is something that I rarely do. With this, I drew on the back of the other drawing. I rarely ever do that. On the off chance that I have to cut off the spine from the notebook, I will only have one-sided drawings, just in case I want to put them into a binder. These were just some ideas for postcards that I wanted to make. And then this was from a really old RuneScape short series called RuneScape Gods Exposed. I used to watch that all the time because it was hilarious. At one point in the series, one of the characters is turned into a shovel and he's caught singing the like anatomy song, but just of himself. What was his name? Gunthorian? I missed that. That was really good. RuneScape Gods Exposed was hilarious. My handle's connected to my metal part. My metal part's connected to my handle. That was like hands down my favorite joke from the entire series and I wanted to put it on a t-shirt just because I felt like it was funny enough to stand on its own. Good times. I used to play RuneScape all the time until someone stole my account and used it for botting and got it banned. Can I please have my account back, RuneScape? I liked your game. Next, I forgot about this one. Essentially, they took one person from each major and then they grouped them all together and we made this like weird colorful box thing that had a bunch of light optical illusions. It was weird. Next page. Let us break the human within you. I think this one was actually a sketch that was kind of just based on some of my previous work and I wanted to kind of bring that style back. I like some of my old drawings, so I like kind of having a bit of a throwback to my old styles. And then this right here are some sketches of a character that I made, which I want to say is actually on my deviant art. This is the Amoeba girl. She's cool. I like her. I wanted to kind of try practicing like full body poses because I have a lot of difficulty with those sometimes. Next page. Oh, I remember this. So when I was getting my degree, we actually were in the same building as all the architecture students and they would constantly throw away these scrap pieces of balsa wood. If you've never played with balsa wood, I recommend it. Balsa wood is like this super light, almost like 
foam wood. It seriously feels like styrofoam. At least I'm pretty sure it's balsa wood. But I really love balsa wood because it's really, really easy to carve. And so I used to make these little figurine guys out of it, out of just stacks of balsa wood. That was fun. That was a nice little craft. Here, we get a self-portrait. I was trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to look like, but what I could feasibly look like. And so I drew this as a kind of echo to be. And I think it worked out pretty well. Next page. While I was going to school, there were also a bunch of industrial design students, and one of their first projects was to design shoes, and I kind of envied that. So I took it upon myself to kind of design my own pair of boots. Personal projects. Stealing the projects of other degrees. I don't know, it was just a fun project. Next page. My friends and I were very prone to talking with our hands, but we found that sometimes we would end up using the exact same gestures for the same words, and we kind of accidentally ended up making our own little sign language. So at one point I decided to just kind of sit down and document it. It was kind of just an inside joke. I'm sure that some of these actually mean things in sign language that are not what we use them for, but whatever. We were just college students. We were having fun with life and stuff. Next. So this is an original character that I made for a comic called The Art of Destroying the World. And it was kind of just a story about a graffiti artist, vandal in a mask, who would run around and put terrible art everywhere. Honestly, I don't think I had any development beyond that, just this one page. It was an idea. And then this one was just kind of like a superhero design, kind of inspired by Spider-Man, but a girl. Yet another drawing that I never finished. Next. Ooh. This is another one where I was just playing with styles. I think that this fish girl right here was inspired by the character from Megamind, but I'm not sure. I can't completely remember the inspiration for this one. Here I just drew another skeleton boy as a reference to the cover. Also, strangely enough, I'm pretty sure that these two drawings were not inspired by Gravity Falls, although they really look like it. I'm pretty sure I was just trying to try out a different way of drawing eyes because I don't usually just draw perfectly round eyes. So this was a face that I actually drew so that I could try and develop hairstyles on my computer. The entire point of this was just to have a blank slate that I could apply different hairstyles to. I think I used it a total of two times, and then never again. He knows everything. These are just little doodles, and this is an all-knowing alien. With this one I was just kind of trying out a different style that I hadn't tried before. And then with these, these were based on some photographs of a friend of mine, and I was just trying to practice drawing dynamic poses. Bodies are difficult to draw. I remember the tears, the sadness, the pain. When I drew these, I was kind of trying to do like a throwback, for lack of better words, to some of my older art styles, because I remember that a lot of the artwork that I did was when I was kind of in a bad mental state, and it's kind of what the phrasing is a reference to. I feel like it looks a lot like my older artwork. I'm glad I can still draw that way. Next page. And now we're getting to the end of the book. So this is actually a drawing that I kind of uh, stole. Not really though. My friend Esther was playing around with a multicolored pencil and she was gonna throw this away, and so I asked her if I could keep it instead. And now I'm showing it to hundreds of thousands of people. Sorry, Esther. It's not my drawing, but I like it a lot. And it says magic. Okay, so there's two more drawings in this sketchbook and they're both kind of like partner characters. For a while I was playing with the idea of a comic about these two girls named Raven and Crow, and this is Crow. I imagined her being a little bit shorter and thinner and having short hair. And then the other character was a girl named Raven. Raven was meant to be a bit thicker and have really dark long hair, and I wanted the comic to be about them as girlfriends, and they were just supposed to be like a cute couple, and I was gonna make a comic about them just kind of living their lives. It was also going to be an application of the style that I was developing, but this is once again another project that I really didn't take much further. But that is the end of this sketchbook. I've been having a very long, stressful day, and I'm gonna go and deal with some problems. Sorry the video quality on this is really odd. I'm trying a thing, give me a break. I'm gonna give you a thousand awesome points for making it to the end of this video and for enduring the first ever bound sketchbook in my sketchbook tour video series thing. Click that little bell thing if you want notifications from this channel and I will see you guys hopefully in a week. We'll find out. Bye. I'm exhausted. Today is a long day. Oh, my insides hurt just a bit. Ugh. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, that's the end. The internet.